This is Baxter Van West from AirVenture 2018. Behind me is the only airworthy A26K in the world. Here's J.R. Hoffman to give us a closer look. Well, we're here at uh, Oshkosh uh, 2018 to show off the A26 Special K. This is a unique aircraft, only 40 made. This is number 40 off the assembly line. It's an on-mark modified uh, aircraft that was used in Vietnam to interdict truck traffic on the Ho Chi Minh Trail. Uh, this is the only one that's in existence that flies, completely airworthy, culminating in an eight-year restoration. The aircraft is completely airworthy. You can see we have replica ordnance, replica guns, but we've modernized some things, but you wouldn't know it. We've put some modern avionics in it. We've got a Garmin in there. We've got a, uh, a Flightstream 210. We've got a 406 ELT. Uh, but the aircraft has been completely disassembled and restored and put back together. We've been through the entire airplane, flight control system, landing gear system, fuel system, oil system, engines, completely replaced every single hose in this thing, numerous structural repairs. She had some corrosion issues and things like that we've addressed. We've used all modern technology, modern fasteners, things like that, but you wouldn't know it. When you look at the aircraft, you'd think it was on mark 1964. So we've gone completely through the landing gear. It's completely uh, restored and operational. Uh, put a lot of effort into that. Uh, one thing that we did, we modernized it, but if I didn't tell you, you would not know it. Inside here are two Halon 1301 fire bottles. So it's a really safe aircraft. So if we have an emergency, we can fire both bottles, either at one engine or both engines or whatever we have to do. So all these pylons are original. They actually work. We can drop this stuff off here, although they're locked out. We don't, we don't do that. Uh, and these are absolute, absolutely authentic recreations. There's a fellow that made these for us. Uh, this is a, a, a real napalm tank right here. This is a general purpose bomb. This is a rocket pod. And these are, uh, this is a bomblet dispenser. Dispenses about 19 of these little hand grenade looking bombs out the back and then they explode down on the ground. It would cover about a football field with all these little explosions, very deadly. On Mark modified this tail. Uh, these bigger engines, big prop. They've extended the rudder. They've actually extended the fuselage about 18 inches. It takes about 300 pound force if you lose an engine on those rudder pedals to kick this thing over. So it's quite a beast. Uh, all the markings you see right here, these are absolutely original. Uh, down to the size, the spacing and things like that. You can see the various antennas. Uh, that white antenna right there, that's an ELT. One of the things we did, we modernized. We put a 406 ELT in here for safety reasons. And it's integrated with our Garmin up in the cockpit. Uh, all these uh, uh, decals and stencils are painted on that you can see. That's all original size, original spacing. Absolutely authentic and correct for this aircraft. She's covered with her original armor plating. This is a material called Dural. And then you see this fairing panel right here. These are actually wood fairing panels. Now, Onmark originally had used a plywood fairing panel. They were very difficult to recreate, so we opted to use white poplar, and we steam and heat form them, and then painted and treated them, and then they're bolted right to the aircraft exactly how they would have been at Onmark in 64. So main landing gear on the uh, A26, originally they came out with drum brakes, and they're kind of notorious for being inefficient, and maybe not get you stopped when you need to be stopped. Well, the K model has got Bendix, Three rotor, eight piston, disc brakes. Very effective. Okay, so um, this is Special K's uh, engines. We have two Pratt Whitney R2800. They are uh, 18 cylinder radial engines. This is the Twin Wasp. Uh, rated at 2,500 horsepower, but because we have the 100 octane low lead, we feel we have about 2,200 uh, horsepower in each one of these. Uh, main carburetor, it's got PR58 carburetor in there, Stromberg carburetor, huge carburetor. So in the bomb bay, we have 12 positions where they could carry 4,000 pounds of bombs, typically general purpose bombs, 250 pounders, 500 pounders. So these shackles right here, so we've a, a, a mass them of the original shackles that would have been on this aircraft. This one, for example, has a serial number that we trace back to a B-29. Now we have not found out if that B-29 operated, but it's quite possible that bombs fell over Tokyo that came off of the shackle right here. But these are original Bombay doors. Uh, to the side, there's a gun camera window. They would have had gun cameras in here too where they could have done bomb damage assessment, things like this. Uh, up here, this is all reconstructed. This was uh, uh, extensively damaged during the crash in 1977, but it's all been restored and it's um, 
identical to how it would have been when he operated in the Air Force. Uh, there's a tow bar to my right right here that we have to travel with uh, because not everybody's got an A26 tow bar. And one of the things that we've put on here, we've put her timeline on here. So when visitors come in here, they can look and they can see where she's been and what she's done and how long she's lived. We'll see you up in the cockpit. So we're up here in the cockpit and you can see it's been completely restored. Uh, obviously your pilot, navigator, bombardier, but two years ago this was completely gutted. It was nothing but wires hanging out. What you see is original and it's exactly as it would have been during the Vietnam era. The only thing that we've changed, we put that Garmin in the middle of the stack. We put a new radio. The armament panel is above the glare shield. So you can see all the switches that control the bomb bay doors, the guns, every one of the eight uh, external store pylons and things like that. Uh, so one of the things that you'll see on that left hand circuit breaker panel next to the pilot's left leg, that's where uh, the modern avionics panel circuit breakers are. That's where the uh, fire bottle switch is and uh, some of those other things. If you look at the cockpit insulation panels, these are all original material recreated exactly how they would have been on the K model. We found this gun sight on eBay. That's the actual Douglas data plate. So on mark, reserialized the aircraft, but they used a Douglas data plate. So the modern avionics that we put in here, we obviously we had to put a, a Garmin in to navigate. We put a flight stream 210 so we can upload the flight plans using an iPad. Behind the gun sight up there is a Bendix King KLH-10 lift detector, okay? Some of the other avionics that we had, we added Bendix King, I think it's a KH-155 uh, VHF radio. We put a transponder in there. And this is one of the first Warbirds to have ADS-B out. So we're really proud of what we've done and how it all looks. It's absolutely authentic 1969 when you step up into this cockpit. Uh, this is, these are 1945 style gauges and they work exactly like that. So we had to buy manuals to learn how to overhaul them and service them and, and get them to operate. This is your only air conditioning system right here. It's this little vent that pops up and pops down. That's pretty cool. You know, the seal on the canopies, we had to go source that, about three different sources before we got something that actually worked and made this thing watertight because obviously a lot of these seals and soft goods, they just don't make anymore. Canopy, these canopy glass, these were all made by airplane plastic. This is all new glass. Obviously, you can see the black de-icing boots. Well, we took the de-icing boots off. Those are painted on de-icing boots. You can see the tip tanks right there. Those are exactly the way they would have been. This is your main, your number one VHF antenna. We have another antenna on the, on the belly. Here's what it would have filled up the Bombay tank from here. This aircraft has 100 stencils, exactly 100 stencils, and we faithfully made every single one of them right according to the TO. Okay, so this is the aft compartment or the gunner's compartment, uh, as they refer to it in World War II. K doesn't have that. Uh, so what we do is we transport our crew back here. But we kept the compartment original. These are all original radios that would have been in here during Vietnam. Uh, obviously, we modernized a little bit. We have a real first aid kit. That's exactly how they would have had it. Crash axe, halon fire extinguisher. But every bit of it works. We have uh, hookups for headset microphones back here and pretty soon we're going to hook up a uh, cable to a GoPro up front where we'll be able to monitor everything up front from an iPad back here. But all the lights work. These are all original. The seats are out of a Bell 429 helicopter. If you want to find out more about us, we have uh, a Facebook page, uh, Special K. You can find us really easy. And if you want to see even more detail, you can look at my Instagram page, Special KJR. We put updates on there daily.